We're here in Cornwall, Connecticut at New England Naval Timbers. And we've got a timber up here in the band mill. We've got every intention of cutting the keel out for Orca. So we're gonna cut eight by eights out of this timber right here. We're actually gonna get four of them. One of them is gonna be really nice and the size we want. And the next one will be a little bit smaller. But uh, then the, what's left in the corners, we're gonna quarter saw for frames. So, you know, we're going to get a lot out of this timber right here. It's a, it's a way of cutting it that I don't think they've done much cutting like that up here. I kind of designed the procedure and uh, the way I want to see it cut. And Jimmy the Sawyer is just going to take care of it. Jimmy, it's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. I hope we can get the piece that we want out of this log. I think we're going to be able to get it. We're going to get a timber out of this. This is the bell end or the bottom end. Jimmy and I have taken some time to figure out what I'm actually after. I had a sketch of it, and I'm holding it up right there. And uh, you know, I had my intentions. It's very different than the way they would have sawn this log, but uh, I like it that way. I want it quarter sawn. I want the annual rings going straight across this thing one way and the medullary rays the other way. Because when it shrinks, it shrinks square. If it was had diagonal annual rings across that timber, it would shrink into a rhombus. So this is a pretty exciting moment for us right here. And uh, I've picked the run out of this log that I want to see that keel come out of. You know, not very many people really want to pick something that they really need out of a log like this because they're afraid of how it's going to open up. But you know, I've been looking at logs like this for quite some time, and I get the feeling we're going to get the piece out of there that we need without too much trouble. So off we go. I'm, I'm going to get it from all the way on the other end. All the way down, down to the frame. Yeah. It's 20 or 21. Uh, it's down, down to this frame. That frame right there, yep. Yeah, okay, 20 or 21. Now we get 22. Not far off, eh? No. Jimmy and I have made an effort here to look at this log as carefully as we can. And uh, so we, we work at it and uh, look at it very carefully at both ends, make a decision, and uh, we'll head for that. That doesn't mean I couldn't change my mind a little bit or move it over off-center a little bit different. You know, same basic plan, but a little bit off-center maybe. And uh, so it's going to work out really nice. Uh, I find Jimmy to be really easy to work with and I think we're having a ball here. But it's really important for me to get it the way I want it. And you have to align it with the mill too at the same time, you know. It has to be rolled the proper way, you know, it has to be shimmed the proper way, and it has to be aligned the proper way. And with a long timber like this, 25 feet long, you know, it's much more important to align, align it properly because otherwise your guides are going to bang into it down the other end and then you have to move it after you start cutting. And you could lose size in your timber or get it a little twisted or it'd just be a hassle. You don't want to move it with the blade in it. You could bend the blade, all kinds of different things could happen, you know. So, you know, we get it where we want it before we start cutting. One more thing we have to do is we have to shim the log up. And we don't want to shim it by the side of the log or by the sapwood. We want to shim it by the center of the log. So we're measuring from the framework of the mill up to the center of the log on both ends. And we found out that one end has to be lifted. And uh, I'll slip a shim underneath it and set it back down, measure it again. And uh, you know, if it's all right, we'll, we'll saw. If it's not, we'll adjust it again. Yeah, now I'm going to take my big chunk. Yeah. So I'll just have to trim a little off of here. Hopefully it clears all the way. Yeah. Well, we're just getting started. And the first thing we'll have to do is trim the bottom end of the log so it fits through the mill a little bit differently. This is the bottom of the tree. It gets a little bit bigger down there. Some people would just cut that right off, maybe three feet, so the log wouldn't have that bell end. But uh, I want the full length of it, so I'm taking it bell end and everything. That makes it a little bit more difficult. So we're trimming one side off, then we'll roll it 90 degrees and trim the bell end again and sometimes it won't even go through the mill it's a little bit too wide so we'll have to take a chainsaw and take some of the bell end off with a chainsaw just so that the guides go right by there and uh, once you do that you know we're pretty much all set we can flip the log any way we want and start cutting well here we go our first cut is to just take some of the sapwood off and see if we're lined up kind of nice and everything that way we won't jam up the guides now, this mill's got like a little rotary saw that leads ahead of the band so that uh, 
the band won't hit rocks and different things like that. You know, that little rotary blade is easy and cheap to replace, but the band mill is not. Now we're paying for this log, what I would call run of the mill. That means it's scaled as a log. We're paying for the whole thing. If we put an order in, say, he would only have to fill the order and a lot of the other stuff would be scrapped. Depends on how he wanted to cut it and if it was a keel or whatever else. When he sells it run of the mill, he's guaranteed the money for the whole log, no matter how it opens up. Well, I've been doing business with Duke for 40 years and uh, he knows I know what I want. He's allowing me to work with the Sawyer, which is really cool. It's not like, you know, I tell the Sawyer what to do and he goes and does it. You know, I don't get to look at it or change my mind or make decisions as we saw it. So, you know, Jimmy and I have an understanding that that's the way it's going to be. I'm going to look at this thing as it opens up. I could change my mind. Hopefully I won't. And uh, I'm going to get four quartered timbers out of it. You know, nothing else will do me any good. So, you know, that's what we're going to do. We have to pick around the heart and saw off the sapwood. And by that time, you start trimming it down, maybe you trim an inch off a little bit less than what you wanted, but, you know, it's all fine. It's quite, uh, there's going to be some nice timbers in there. You know, you have to be a little brave when you're picking a log out like this because it's on me. I mean, all the responsibility for picking this timber out or this log that I feel as if we're going to get this timber out, that, that weight is on me. You know, the Sawyer nor the owner of the mill have given me one indication of what might come out of it. So we're just gonna take a few more one buys and we kinda have to be careful that the log doesn't take a set because it could make it half an inch at one end and an inch in the middle, but it is coming off really nice and straight. So we cut it about an inch. We have to plane it down possibly to three quarters of an inch. And this will make great material for framing because it really uh, has no other purpose in the boat. So. We're going to try to get them as one buys. We have to plane them out at three quarters of an inch, but sometimes when you saw them, it gets thin on one end or thin in the middle. It depends on the set of the log when you make your first cuts. So we're careful. We're going to cut one buys off of it. And, uh, you know, we might get a couple runs of framing out of each piece. Maybe the first piece only one run, then the next piece maybe two runs, and the next piece maybe three. But whatever it is, we're going to use it. Well, the timber's up on the mill. We've made a couple of cuts. We want the cut to be nice and flat so we can eventually turn that against the vertical. But right now, we're going to make another cut right straight across the log. And you see it's got this big check in it. So I'm staying away from that. I'm putting the heart uh, out. I'm going to cut the heart right out of it and put an 8 by 8 right here. I think it's going to fit right in there just nice as can be. Uh, the timber's pretty straight. so. It should, it should work out really well. And then we're going to try to get some timbers out of the rest of it. And then we're going to get some quarter sawing stuff right out of the corner piece that's left. We'll cut it like that and like that and like this and like this until, you know, we get some nice quartered stock for framing. Now we're setting up to make our first big cut, one slab at eight inches. And we're just going to bring the blade in and touch it on the end of the log just to make sure we've got it all right. And uh, we'll just measure it again before we start cutting. This log, produces what I want. It'll just be a wonderful thing. It really will. And, uh, you know, now we're going to check the height of it in, in the middle and sight it to make sure it hasn't uh, taken too much of a set so we know that we're going to get a nice straight timber off of it. Never mind eight inches, but nice and straight. And usually when you get near the heart like this or near the heart, it doesn't uh, curve as much as it would if it was uh, uh, off to the side. So it's going to stay nice and straight, I guarantee you. And here it goes. So this is a substantial log, really. It's as big as this mill wants to mill. Anything bigger than that could crush this mill, really. And the mill's got an extension on it for the length of this log. That's not really a problem for the mill at all, as far as, you know, uh, straining it or anything. It just lets it taxi along a little bit longer. It's another set of ways, actually. So we're going to get two timbers out of this right here, this cut. And one's going to be on each side of the heart and both of them are going to be reasonably quarter sawn. So that's what I've been looking for, and that's what we're going to get. So we just finished making the cut, and we're returning the mill back to the starting position here, and I'm going to get a look at this thing. It didn't warp at all or take a set, so that's exactly what we wanted. And what we're going to do now is set it aside 
and uh, we're going to use the fork truck to do that. It's a log truck, actually, and he's got it parked in exactly the right position. It just stays there. We don't have to run around with the truck, but we're going to swing this timber over and set it down and then saw what we've got left on the mill, and once we've done that, we'll return this back to the mill and saw those two timbers out of it that I was talking about. So that's a good sized slab right there. You know, it's pretty heavy. You don't muscle that around with, with your arms and legs. You know, you need something like this to take care of that. So it makes it pretty easy and Jimmy's so good at it that it just happens quickly. Now we're gonna go back to what's left on the mill here and tip it 90 degrees, set the cut that we made up against the vertical barrows, and he's just gonna check it with the mill a little bit to make sure it's aligned properly. And we're just gonna take some of the sapwood right off of it, a couple cuts, not too much of anything there worth anything, but another cut and there'll be some usable material in it. Now, we're gonna make sure we get down there far enough. Now we're gonna make a deep cut, eight inches deep, and uh, one end to the other, it's uh, 25 feet long. Now look at that, look at the set that that took when it came off the mill. I mean, quite a set. You kind of have to anticipate that a little bit on a lot of these timbers. I was really lucky on the first ones that they didn't take a set. And uh, we're lucky on this one too. Now they can be trimmed down in size for numbers of different reasons. So that set doesn't really bother us at all. Then we're gonna rotate what's left on there 180 degrees. The mill actually have a provision to do that. And uh, now we've got it lined up the way we want. We're gonna make a cut. This time we're gonna leave eight inches. We're not too concerned about what's gonna come off, but we're gonna be concerned about what's left. You can see how much easier this cut is because we don't have any alignment problems and we don't have any big width to it. So it just takes off and cuts it like nothing. Uh, once we get that thing done, we'll return the mill back to the other end, and we're going to take this piece of scrap off the top. If you flip it up, and you cut it, cut it kind of big or a couple of times. So that leaves us an 8-inch slab. It's been cut on three sides, so what we're going to do now is rotate it 90 degrees and then make that last cut. So we're going to cut a few pieces off, and uh, you know, make most of it's cut down near the bell end. Then we'll return, cut another one by off, and then return again. We're gonna cut maybe four of them right off there, and then what's left is a timber, and we can resaw that any way we want. If we want it to come down to seven inches or anything we want, uh, you know, we can do it right here. We're trying to make sure that that timber stays nice and straight too. That's why some of these little one bys you take off you know, uh, different dimensions on each end. But as you do it, the timber straightens out. So that's exactly what we're trying to do. We're trying to keep them as straight as possible. As we've said before, Orca was transformed from a Novi built boat, Nova Scotian built. You know, they didn't have quite have the timber that we've got. You know, they didn't really build them with a white oak keel like we're gonna have. I mean, they might have had a number of different kinds of material for a keel, you know, all the way from larch, all the way to pine to red oak, I, I, I really not uh, uh, familiar with it, uh, to tell you the truth, but we want to have real quality lumber and this is it. We're keeping these timbers as big as we can right now, because there's a lot of useful material in them. I'm hoping to get the keel that I want and the rest of it will be used. There might be some shorter timbers in it, like a stem or a forefoot or something like that, so I'll trim them in length. And then, you know, I can get engine beds, really nice quarter sawn engine beds, maybe some of the lower floor timbers and different things like that, stern posts, who knows what I'm going to get out of it. But uh, we're going to make use of all of this lumber when we're building Orca. Now we've got the log truck, and we're going to bring that first slab that we cut back onto the mill. It's pretty easy with that log truck. It would be impossible for us to do that by hand. The log truck saves us a ton of work, and... Uh, now that we've got it up on the mill, we're gonna look at it real quick. We're gonna turn it up 90 degrees before we start cutting. Jimmy and I are gonna talk this one over pretty careful because that last piece on the mill is the piece that we wanna use for the keel. And uh, we want it to come out as nice as possible. Let's, let's say that. You know, it won't be exactly perfect, but whatever's wrong with it, I'll probably rab it out when I cut the planking rabbit. So this is gonna be a nice timber, it really, really is. 
We're just after cutting all the sapwood and all that right off of it. Now we finished cutting a few one buys off of it, and then we're going to make another deep cut. And uh, when we do that, we anticipate that thing's set, and let's see what happens. You know, we're going to start at the beginning and saw right down through it, and I think you're going to see it spring. Now, look at it spring. Now, what's left didn't spring at all, and that's exactly the piece that we're looking for. So. Now we're going to remove that top piece, and uh, it has quite a set in it, but believe me, we're going to use every bit of it. We can cut it up in shorter timbers, like I said, engine beds and floor timbers and different things. So we can cut timbers out of it too, they just have to be a little bit shorter. So we'll decide what we want to do with that log afterwards. And uh, we've got the remainder of it on the mill. Now we're going to flip this piece 180 degrees and uh, cut some off that side. Now we're going to cut down, get rid of some of the sapwood and different things like that. It'll be a little bit deeper cut on the top end than it is on the bell end actually this time. And then we're going to make another cut maybe parallel to that. What we're concerned here with is that we leave 8 inches on the mill. Not how much we take off, it's how much we leave. Well now we're trimming this timber right down to the size we want. We're going to take a few one buys off of one side and take a little look at it all over again and decide which way it might go in the boat and different things like that. Now that's a pretty nice timber. It does have a check right through it on one end, but all that will be cut off when I join it to the forefoot. So basically it's going to be pretty flawless really. Uh, there's a little tiny bit of sapwood on one corner of it, but when I take and rabbit it for the plank, and that'll disappear. So this is a nice piece of lumber right here for the keel of a boat that size. And then we decided we'll, we'll flip it 180, and we'll take one more cut off the other side, and that's it. I also want to point out that it did stay nice and straight in both respects. You can look at it, you know, on the side or on the top, and it's nice and straight. If it sprung a little bit, we could straighten it out anyhow, because you just put like a spreader on it and a chain and put a little tension on it when you're building and it'll just stay straight after that. But, you know, this one's nice and straight. That little check on the end, we're going to cut that piece of material off when we join it to the forefoot. So, pretty nice piece of wood. Uh, I think I'm lucky I picked it out of the right side of the tree and everything, so we did pretty good. Well, here's three timbers here that we could use for the keel. We just have to pick out the one that we want. We've got another one up in the mill that's very good too, so we got four timbers out of that one log. And they're also quarter sawn, which I like a lot, so they don't shrink into a rhombus. They shrink, you know, square like this. And uh, these are pretty heavy. We're not going to try to bring these home ourselves. We're going to get them delivered because uh, that's the way to go. So, you know, we're really happy we got them sawn out today. Orca, here we come.